Hi, my name is Chris Corton. I'm the chief engineer of Electra's technology demonstrator program. And I'm with Electra. Electra is a company developing a hybrid ESTOL aircraft. And a hybrid ESTOL is an aircraft that can take off and land in distances comparable to helicopters and with the economics of a fixed wing airplane. So operational flexibility with low cost. It really started with two companies that were working on eVTOL aircraft and a research group at MIT that was working on eSTOL aircraft. And those two companies have come together now. So Airflow and Electra have uh, joined and become Electra. And a bunch of uh, us, including myself from MIT, are working on this as well. So it really was the concept of distributed electric propulsion and applied to the eSTOL idea so you can have um, you know, more range, more payload, higher speed without some of the penalties of uh, eVTOL aircraft. So the eSTOL aircraft uses blown lift, which is the core of the technology concept. All the distributed electric propulsion enables blowing over the entire wing, and that augments the lift of the wing and enables slow speeds, which give you really short takeoff and landing distances. So that's why the electric propulsion is important, because in previous concepts, including the C-17 behind me, you have this blown lift effect, but you need large numbers of turbine engines, so it has to happen at large scale. So electric propulsion allows you to do this at any scale you want. And where we think it's really interesting is to do this at sort of a nine-passenger regional air mobility type aircraft. Uh, the other important piece is the hybrid propulsion, because current battery technology, it's hard to get regional ranges with existing you know, reserve requirements. And so you need the hybrid electric to enable you know, in the near term, SAF and, you know, reduce fuel burn over conventional aircraft, and then in the longer term to transition to improved batteries or hydrogen propulsion while retaining the benefits from a performance standpoint of the distributed electric system. The blown lift technology has been well developed, but it has not yet been applied at aircraft at this scale, and it hasn't been applied using electric motors. So the research is really around how you couple the motors into the flight control system because precision approach and precision touchdown is uh, you know, a big part of this. You have to have very precise landings to take advantage of the very short braking distances. Additionally, there's a lot of development work on making hybrid systems practical and flight worthy and safe. That hasn't, hasn't been done. And so there's research on the certification aspect of the of the hybrid system and the, the operational you know, reliability piece. Stoll aircraft do exist today, and there's a fundamental trade with Stoll aircraft that if you want to go to shorter and shorter takeoff and landings, you give up high-speed crews and you give up range and efficiency. You compromise the design of the airplane to get that short takeoff and landing. And you basically make your wing bigger and you make your crews less efficient. And that's the paradigm that electric propulsion breaks because now you don't have to have that compromise. You could have the very short takeoff and landings and a wing that's still efficient in high-speed crews. And the hybrid system also helps with this because now you can have the batteries that give you a power boost for the high power takeoff and landing, and then a turbine that's optimized to run at its most efficient power setting during cruise. So you also get an uh, efficiency benefit on the powertrain side. Traditional aircraft with a, with a high lift system, there's a limit to how much of a lift coefficient or how effective you can make that high lift system. And so at a certain point to make a stole aircraft land and take off in shorter distances, you just have to make the wing bigger and you need big flaps and slats. And there's, you can only push that so far. With the blown lift, you can really increase the effectiveness of relatively simple flap systems. So you can have a double slotted flap that's mechanically simple, but with the blowing, you get a huge jump in effectiveness. And so you can keep your wing size small and efficient where you want it for crew. So we're looking at a model of the eStole concept. Um, and this is the concept that we'll be using for the nine passenger product. And so you can see there's eight motors on the wing and they blow an inboard flap and an outboard aileron. And so the inboard flap is really where this high lift generation happens and the outboard is for low speed control and you're mixing the differential power of the outboard motors into the roll and yaw control of the airplane to be able to do precision touchdowns and reject gusts on you know windy approaches and really make this an operational concept. Uh, Electra and Airflow both have history in eVTOL development. The Electra team, many of us worked at Aurora 
developing personal air vehicle uh, eVTOL concepts for them. And many of the airflow groups came out of the Airbus Bahana project, developing their uh, eVTOL. And both uh, groups sort of independently came to the realization that eVTOL is a hard technical challenge. And if you can do this eStol concept, you can have a lot of you know, economic benefits uh, without some of the major technological and certification hurdles that you have to overcome. By making a fixed wing airplane, which can be clearly certified under part 23, doesn't require many special conditions, um, and has much lower power requirements, it makes the, the system level challenge a lot easier. And with the hybrid system, you don't have to worry so much about the current state of battery technology. You can have useful ranges and um, you know, meet the current reserve requirements as they're written today. And the other piece is when we look around at a lot of the vertiport concepts that are being proposed, there's normally two or three helipads that are together. And so you can combine those helipads into an eastal runway and there's you know, thousands of airports around. So the current and pro proposed infrastructure that exists largely supports eastal and supports certainly enough to make this an economically viable proposition. We see a few compelling market opportunities for this technology. Um, on the commercial side, there's cargo and passenger, and we're really there focused on the regional mobility market. So filling that transportation gap between about 50 and 250 or 300 miles. And that's flying from congested cities to a lot of places with existing small airports or where you might install a, a new airport in the future. And there it's really the opportunity to reduce the operating cost operate out of any existing airport with, with large payloads that, that give the, uh, the potential benefits. And then on the military side, we see a lot of benefit to distributed logistics concepts where you need to transport you know, cargo or supplies uh, you know, hundreds to a thousand of miles and, and land in constrained and unimproved areas. And that's where the slow landing speeds really help, as well as um, for some of the special operations missions, the fact that this is a much quieter concept. Uh, this is much quieter than, than certainly than helicopters and also than uh, you know, comparable fixed wing airplanes. And that has uh, interest for covert operations as well. When you compare against helicopter operations, it's a huge advantage. It's 80% you know, or more reduction in operating costs to fly one of these compared to a helicopter. And for a large majority of the helicopter missions that are done today, this airplane could also get into the areas where they take off and land, not some but not all. There's also a benefit compared to existing fixed wing airplane like a Cessna Caravan because the hybrid system you know, can be optimized for crews and that results in lower fuel burn and that can be up to you know, a 30% operating cost reduction over existing aircraft today. The milestones for us were in the development of a two-seat technology demonstrator, so a Cessna 172 size aircraft, and this is intended to be our, our first manned aircraft and prove out the flight control concepts and, and really show that this is an operational vehicle. And then beyond that, we're moving into the development of a nine-seat passenger aircraft uh, for a targeting a 2027 entry into service. Technology is scalable, and that's really the beauty of electric propulsion is that First, you, could take, you can take this technology and scale it up and down uh, pretty much to any power class. So you can have this at a small scale, a nine passenger or even smaller. You can scale it up to a 19 passenger and you, know, you can see behind me clearly it, it works at a, at a, C1, a C-17 size. So there's, um, there's no limit on, on sort of the size of the technology. There's current practical limits on what electric propulsion components you can buy. As electric powertrain components become available in higher and higher power classes, you know, this, this concept will work at, at any scale. The design of the propellers for this aircraft is an, is an interesting design challenge because the size of the propellers relative to the flaps is critical to get the blown lift uh, effectiveness that the concept is based on. So you're trying to have relatively high disc loaded propellers. Um, there's a lot of them, so that, as you can see here, it leads to relatively high cord propellers. These are also designed for low noise, so to keep the tip Mach number down, uh, you, get, uh, you get sort of a unique propeller design. And you see this also on the X-57 and other sort of comparable blown lift airplanes. The flight profile of this aircraft is probably most similar to the flight profile of 90% of, of helicopter operations that you see today. 
It will land in relatively level body attitude and it will take off 10 or 15 degrees nose up. Uh, so it's, you know, very comparable to flying in a current helicopter. It, it flies on steep uh, 9 to 10 degree approaches so it can fit within the existing helicopter operations. But it's important to, to mention that the way this gets the short takeoff and landing is through flying slow not accelerating quickly to high speeds. So the forces on uh, the passenger are very comparable to what you feel every day in a car. Um, it's car-like accelerations and decelerations and with sort of normal aviation body attitudes. We have a great team. Our headquarters is in Manassas, Virginia, although we have groups in, uh, in Cambridge and Switzerland and California. So we're scattered a little bit as we grew up during the, the pandemic. We never have had a, a central office. This is a fantastic project. This is, this is the most fun project I've ever worked on. It is uh, an amazing challenge to be able to design a new, a new type of aircraft and have to design from the ground up sort of the tools and the approaches to do that. And we also have a fantastic team. So it's a real pleasure to work with some of the, the best engineers I've ever encountered. So this is a incredible project. I can't wait to see it fly and, and you know, keep going forward with this.